I love it. The wind's blowing like crazy. <laughs> I've always enjoyed the wind. You know the scripture, the wind bloweth with your will, you neither know where it's coming from nor where it's going, so choose everyone led by the Spirit of God, so that everyone should be called a Jesus Chip Seeker. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe just me. Maybe that's my line. Oh well. We should yearn to be more like Jesus. Surely the righteous shall give thanks unto thy name, the upright shall dwell in thy presence. There should be a holy quality, a mysterious and holy presence within the fellowship of Christian believers. You know, there's something about being a missionary in another country that when you ran into another missionary, there was a, a connection. You just don't know what it is. Matter of fact, don't know how it happens, except that we know it's the Spirit of God, but it's there. Sometimes on the internet you can find that with some people it may not always be there but there's there are opportunities to make that connection because God can use anything anywhere anytime to connect you with other believers the reality was supposed to be that we would all be one and that God could write a letter to a city and that everyone that was a Christian in that city would be addressed and that's how he wrote the letters to the seven churches in the book of Revelation. He wrote to a city, the church at Philadelphia. It was one church. Uh, nowadays, if you wrote to one city, it'd be a fight of whoever wanted to claim it. <laughs> so, unfortunately, we don't see that in the same way, but that there's a corporeal way that it works, that... God still makes us one, even though there may be different attendances at different buildings that people go to. If we are what we ought to be in Christ and by His Spirit, if the whole sum of our lives are beginning with the inner life is becoming more God-like and Christ-like, I believe something of God's divine and mysterious quality and presence will be upon us. In other words, his love would be made manifest in us so that we would begin to show by our love for one another that we are his disciples indeed. I know for myself I'm, I'm struggling in this area because while I have often in the past loved the brethren with no problem, I find myself challenged by, in these latter days, the, the very actions and attitudes that people have and feel justified in as though they can determine for themselves to be either separate or prideful or that they have some kind of authority. You know, that's one of the things that I was always amazed was that a pastor was never meant to be someone in authority. He was meant to be a servant of the Lord and he shared and cared about the people. And that's what pastoring or shepherding was to be like. Now we see it more as an authoritative position among some and not a servant's position among all. I myself don't claim to be a pastor, <laughs> not a chance, but I don't ever see that I need to submit myself somehow to some authority that is my brother, that I can share and care about and serve, yes indeed, and be a part of the ministry with them, but I don't see it as being something that, you know, I automatically say, oh, well, you know, tell me what to do and I'll do it. No, it was never meant to be that way. We're all co-equal. You know, we have different ministries and different parts of the ministry that we serve in, but we serve the Lord Jesus. We don't serve necessarily some person in a position of authority. Now, we may submit to each other in that position of responsibility, but not in a position of authority. I don't see that. I see all of us given that authority in Jesus that we are all one as he is one. And so if we're spiritual, if we're wise, that we think in not robbery of God, you know, to submit ourselves and to be lesser, even when we know we might be greater. I know for myself, lots of times I've been in ministries where I've taken the lesser role to do the littler job, to take care of those things that needed to be done when the man who really 
shouldn't have been from doing what they were doing, did what they did, and somehow, you know, we managed to work it out. And a lot of times it's challenging, but that is what God wants us to do. Just because you have the answer doesn't mean you have the truth. The truth is we're supposed to serve one another in love, to care for each other, to lift each other up. I know when I married my wife, I told her, I said, look, I can love anyone. I choose to love you, but what I will promise you is on the day that I die, you know, or the day that, say, the Lord comes or the rapture happens, then I would lift you up to Him and thank God for the privilege of having you in my life for the time He loaned you to me. But I want you to know Him. You know, and in that respect, you know, that's what we should be, and our attitude should be about each other. We should be wanting to lift each other up in that way to thank God for the privilege of knowing that person and caring so much that they would know God more and possibly even have greater ability than we ourselves have, especially if we are in the eyes of ourselves or man or whatever, wiser, more spiritual or more knowledgeable. Because really, the more you know, the less you know, and the less you know, the more you know. <laughs> it sounds a little weird, but it works. <laughs> I do stand in deeply indebted to every Bible teacher I have had through the years, but they did little to in, but instruct my head. The brethren I have known who had this strange and mysterious quality and awareness of God's person and presence, they instructed my heart. So it was not always about just the fact that someone is in charge, but whether or not they are literally in as it appeared to be had just come from the presence of God himself. Moses, we're told that when he went up on the mountaintop and spoke with God when he came down, shined with the inner light, that he was so bright that they had to cover his face for it glowed and spoke as the face of the Son of Man. And I understand that. I have seen that. Some have said that about me once, you know, only once. <laughs> oh well, <laughs> we can work on that one. <laughs> Maybe we'll get some polish. <laughs> but the people that really spend time with God are the ones that are going to affect you the most and are going to change you the deepest because anyone can get a word from God, you know, and share that. And that's not really them speaking. It's just God using their words to speak through them, just like he could through a donkey or a, a mule. But the people that seem to be like Jesus, the, seem, the people that seem to look like or talk like Jesus, aren't those the ones that you just went, man, I just want to be around them. You know, they're, they're, they're cool. I mean, they're, they're like, they're like Jesus. I mean, that's awesome. And when I think about that, you know, I was thinking, I met a few, but they're few and far between. Now I have a person that I I know on the internet that uh, has a ministry that I would say is the prime example of what we should be in ministry on the internet. And I don't share more than that because if I give away anything, everybody would know who it is. But I am in awe, and I you know not too many people do that to me. But I am in awe of that person. I just remember two now. I remember one pastor now that I am very much in awe of that I, I'm learning from. I'm watching his videos. I'm studying, so I don't care if you know him or not. But very much so. Oh, just blows me away. I mean, so far, every teaching I've heard from, just wow. You know, not too many people wow me anymore. <laughs> but I think of him as not wow because of intelligence or intellect, but Wow, because it feels like you're with God when you're with them. That's just the way it is. And so, God wants each one of us to want and desire to be like that. That people would want to hear, share, be a part, and be around us because we are like unto Jesus. We have become likened unto him. We have begun to say things like he said and do things like he did. So, 
if you read the words that Jesus said, and you find yourself not thinking the same way or saying the same thing, then maybe you're a little more religious than you are relationship. And maybe you've gotten more into doctrine and dogma than the actual words Jesus said. You may be surprised what he really said when you read it yourself. I personally am very challenged by the Christian church at large, just our whole Christendom principles that I found other pastors saying the same thing, that they too likewise are challenged, including this one that I was telling you about. Um, that they say, well, well you know, I, I went along, you know, in the ministry for so long, just assuming I knew what I was saying, until finally I sat down one day and took some time off to really read what was said and what Jesus spoke about and what he meant. And it, it quickened me to my heart and I realized that I really hadn't been that honest about what Jesus really said. And most people are talking about the Sermon on the Mount because everyone uses that as an excused passing by thing that we can say, oh, it's beautiful or it's wonderful, but until you take it personal, you don't really realize what he's saying to each one of us and how powerful it really is and how much that is what a Christian, that's what Jesus, somebody that's like Jesus, is supposed to be, because that's what he was. Oh, that we might yearn for the knowledge and presence of God in our lives from moment to moment. Yeah, let me say that again. Man, I mean, yesterday, and even today, whenever I, you know, post and do my I, I like to say my paperwork because it's really not paperwork, it's digital. But whenever I'm posting Bible studies and the blogs and the networks and the news services and all the things that I do on the internet daily, you know, the, the seven different networks that I run, the um, challenge is always there because there's a lot of heaviness and a lot of material that's, you know, going out, but then at the same time, there's a lot of material coming in that is just burdensome. And so it could weigh me down and, you know, really affect me and my attitude, except, man, when I start to talk about Jesus, like when I get the chance to come out and share the devotionals that I do, the, the six that are consistent, the, you know, two other or three other Bible studies that, you know, try to record in between <laughs> when I get time, seems like I run out of time. But in sharing these devotionals, it's like, oh man, I just, woof. It's like God just suddenly walks in the door of my heart and fills my soul with his presence. And it's almost as though he starts whispering in my ear and starts speaking through my lips that I just want to sit back and stay there for hours and days. And some of you probably know that <laughs> you wish <laughs> that I did and turn the camera off. Maybe I should, you know, but yesterday when I was recording one, I didn't have the camera on and it was like, went right on, you know, it's cool. When I got done, I realized, oh gosh, didn't record that one, but praise the Lord, I got steady. You know, I, I learned a lot from it. It was kind of neat. And that's what I think is the difference between someone who lets God teach through them and someone who prepares a, a mandated practical reality, theological exposition of the word, which is good in its time and its place because that's a Bible study, you know, and there's a good thing about being dogmatic in that presentation way. And in my mind, I do that, you know, I mean, I know some people wonder, well, what's, how, how do you operate in your mind? Well, you know, <laughs> hey, my mind thinks that way. It's very compartmentalized as far as the scriptures are concerned, and as far as the presentation of the Word of God, you know, it's very item-specific, as I mentioned to people in my Bible studies, but in sharing, though, in devotional, it's like letting God go where He wants to go and say what He wants to say. It's so fun to sit and still and to let Him have His way. And I pray for you that maybe you don't know that yet, but Try sharing with someone just your devotion or share someone your your faith or maybe share someone your testimony and 
see if maybe instead of getting worked up about it and fearful and scared and you know all organized and written out and planned out see if you can't just walk up and start talking to someone and see if God doesn't just take over and you get blessed ask God to maybe inspire you in that way ask his Holy Spirit to come into you and to take over once in your life so you would know what I mean by letting him live in you as opposed to you living your own way because first John really did mention something that's very real and people don't quite treat it that real and it is if any man be in Christ and if Jesus be in you and that literally is a fact of reality of a spiritual inhabitants God comes in you you are a being that was meant to have and become a habitation of God himself coming in you and that's what the word Emmanuel meant God with us God in us and so at some point in time you have to cross over from this practical reality of studying and learning and theology and kind of like you know all this other you know kind of stuff you get all you know going to church for at some point in time you kind of have a one-on-one -on -one with God and say God I want to know what it's like to be filled with you I want to know what it's like to be baptized in your spirit I want to know what it's like to have you alive in me and if you do that if you if you try that and ask God to do that I know because it's happened to me he will not only hear he will come to you he will speak to you he will reveal himself to you in a new way you never thought of before because the book of Revelation promises that he stands at the door and knocks and he's not talking to non-Christians he's talking to you Christian he's talking to me every day in any way that at any time you read that scripture in Revelation chapter 3 I believe it is that Jesus is saying behold I stand at the door and knock if any man hear my voice and open the door I will come in that is God saying to you hey I'm knocking it's not saying your heart necessarily it's saying look I want to come into your life I want to be real with you I want you to know how real I can be and that's what it's all about that's why we're Christ likenesses that's why we are Christian that's what the word meant and that's what the word will be and that's why the word is in us and we become one as he is one